Hello there and welcome back. This is Jennifer and I'm glad you're here. Sorry it's been a while since I've done a video. I have hurt my back and so I've been trying to rest a little bit more. Okay, so today I'm really excited because I have a super easy technique for you in creating faux metallic texture on your card. This is a great way to add a lot of interest and texture to your card with very little effort. And it's a great way to get new looks from your embossing folders. You could use any type of embossing folder for this. However, I'm focusing on 3D embossing folders because you get a really cool textured effect. Let's look at those embossing folders first and then get started with the technique. The one I use the most is the Simon Says Stamp Vine Canopy embossing folder. This one is amazing. Has a lot of texture to it and a beautiful pattern that can be used with a lot of products you already have. You'll see me do a lot of cards with that. Here is the Simon Says Stamp Leaf Bundle 3D embossing folder. When you have a 3D embossing folder, you have raised areas and lowered areas and a little bit in between. Really nice smooth transition. And last but not least, the new Simon Says Stamp Wildflower Fields. It's a really beautiful detailed embossing folder. Next, I'll show you how I use these folders. I'm using a Spellbinders Platinum machine. However, you can use whatever die cut machine you have. If you are curious what sandwich to use for a particular embossing folder, I recommend going to the product description for that folder and they usually will tell you there. What I do with the Spellbinders Platinum is I have the platform, the large platform, a metal shim, a folded piece of cardstock, and then the embossing folder, nothing else. And this works great for me. You could skip the cardstock shim if you want. You can put this through this way or sideways, whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. At least it hasn't in my experience. And you can see you get a beautiful impression. And today I'm doing my impressions on metallic cardstock or specialty cardstocks. And I'll talk more about the different options I'll be using as we go. But this is the basic method I used for all of my embossing folders today, at least for all the 3D embossing folders. Here's another example. You can see I have the platform, metal shim, folded cardstock, and then the embossing folder with the cardstock in it. This time I have a silver metallic cardstock. So the idea today is to use your embossing folders with specialty cardstocks, especially those that have a metallic finish, because look at this faux textured metal that you get. Great for making a card really stand out. Let me show you some examples I've done, all using the embossing folders I showed you earlier. Here's the Wildflower Fields embossing folder using the Tonic Silky Sky Mirror Satin cardstock. Now Tonic has a lot of these kind of mirror cardstocks that are great for this technique. The satin ones are particularly beautiful and that's what this one is here. So you can look through your stash. A lot of us have metallic cardstocks. They're usually white on the other side and they work great for this. This one's my favorite with the vine canopy embossing folder. Such a beautiful result and I'm gonna change the look of that a little bit later, so stay tuned. Now you can also use iridescent or holographic cardstocks for this. This is tonic purple rain iridescent cardstock. Look at the beautiful colors it picks up. With all that interest in the cardstock and all that texture, you don't need to add much to it. Here's another mirror iridescent cardstock from Tonic and I use the leaf bundle embossing folder. I like this one because you can just add a flower or a heart or a sentiment right there at the center and you have everything you need. Now basic holographic cardstock works great with embossing folders too. This is the Altenew Mandala uh, embossing folder and look how cool it looks with basic holographic cardstock. All of these I did as I showed you before. And this time I used Pink and Main Sparkle Sheets. It's glitter paper. So you can use glitter paper to get texture. It's a little more subtle, but it gives a cool result. So at this point, I'm just going through my stash and looking at all the shiny cardstock that I have that I can try with this technique. And then I remembered my favorite of all the metallic cardstocks, and that is from Tim Holtz. There are three packs that I like to use. The first is the Metallic Confections Craft Paper Pack. That's the one you see here. They have soft mirror cardstocks here with craft on the back. The other one I like is the Metallic Confections Craft Paper. This is a little more vibrant, a little more jewel tone, again with the craft on the back side of it. I just really like the colors that he chose, especially this purplish black, which I'll use a lot today too. 
And then finally, the silver and gold pack. Now, there is also, I think, a bronze and copper pack, but these are the three that I reach for the most. They die cut really well, and today I found out they work wonderfully with embossing folders. So check this out. That is that dark purplish uh, black color. Look how beautiful that is with the folder. Here is the light mint color, and then here is the gold. I also wanted to show you that these metallic cardstocks were great even with detailed embossing folders, such as this wildflower field embossing folder. Now let's step up some of these backgrounds. I have a sanding block here. You could use sandpaper too. And I'm lightly sanding over the raised areas of some of these backgrounds. Notice what happens is it removes the color and just shows like a silver shine behind it. If I kept sanding, I'd probably get to the craft cardstock on the other side, but I really like the look of this. Now, I don't sand too hard because I don't want to reach the background, just the raised areas. I feel like this makes the pattern stand out more, and it also um, gives a little more character to that faux texture metallic look that we're going for. So I really like the results, especially with the Tim Holtz uh, metallic cardstock. By the way, one of the reasons I really liked his shiny cardstock is it's shiny, but it's not over shiny. It's not like a mirror. You don't see really your reflection in it. You just get that beautiful shine. You can see how nice it is even when you sand this detailed uh, background. Now you can use the sanding block and sanding technique on other cardstocks such as iridescent or holographic cardstocks. In this case, it just takes the shine away. So you can see the color's the same, it's just in the raised area, it's not as shiny. Let's do another example with a holographic or iridescent cardstock using that sanding block on the raised areas. And you can see how it removes the shine from the raised areas, but the background still is. So here's a comparison. On the left is without a sanding block, and on the right is with a sanding block. You can keep sanding even more and the white core will show through. So you can do that if you wanted to. You can see it shows through in a few areas on mine. And my favorite of all the ones we did is the tonic satin mirror cardstock. So it's not as shiny because it's a mirror. The results are very similar to the Tim Holtz metallic cardstock, but this has a white core. So if I kept sanding, white would show through. I did several examples with this one because I really like this blue color and I just wanted to show you the results. So the idea here is to look through your stash and look at any of your specialty cardstocks, glitter cardstock, shiny cardstocks, iridescent cardstocks, and try them in your embossing folder and see if it gives you a new look. The foam metal look is really cool. So now let's create some cards using some of the backgrounds from before. And I do have some other tips to share with you throughout these cards. Let's start with this pair of blue cards using that last background that we just sanded. I've cut it down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm cutting it in half, but at an angle. Now, I, this is one of my favorite ways to take a background that I really like. I cut it into two so I can have two cards to make from it. And cutting an angle is really a great way, an easy way, to add interest to your card. Let's start with the card with the bigger blue piece. If you look closely at the white area, there's little dots embossed. Here's the trick I did. I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. I'm holding my blue piece where I want it to be and drawing a pencil line at the angle. Now I'll use an embossing folder and only partially emboss it. So I'm taking that pencil line and lining it up with the edge of our embossing folder. Everything else will be hanging out. This is the Sunny Studio Lots of Dots embossing folder. It is not a 3D embossing folder, so the sandwich is a bit different. This time I use a clear plate on top. So now I'll run this through my die cut machine and I'll end up with just the dots embossed on that bottom portion of our card at an angle. Now you could do the entire front of the card, but this gives a smooth spot for our textured background, the blue one, to be glued to. I think those dots add a lot to the card, but don't distract from that beautiful blue background. Next I have a piece of double-sided tape that I'm putting along the back of that angled edge. But notice my adhesive is kind of hanging off, so that exposed adhesive is facing up towards the camera. I'm taking a thin strip of silver cardstock and laying it right onto that exposed adhesive, and I'll trim the ends off. This just gives a nice border to our angled edge. I feel like it's kind of like a seam, a finishing touch like you have on the cuff of your shirt. It just really looks nice on the final card. Now I'm using double-sided tape 
to put on the back of the embossed piece and then add it to the card. And by the way, I did trim this piece down so it was a little bit narrow, so it's only about four inches wide. Okay, to finish this off, I used some older Simon Says Stamp products along with some new ones. These are the older etched laurel leaves dies, which I have used many, many times in videos. I think they're excellent and work for many occasions. I'm also using sentiments from the new Simon Says Stamp 3D card die set. This is a great price for an interactive die set, and someday I'll show you how to make the 3D card using it, but today I just use the thank you sentiment from it. So I cut both the thank you and the leaf die from that purplish black metallic cardstock from that Tim Holtz pack I showed you earlier. I also cut those same pieces twice from white cardstock and glued them behind it so that I would have some stacked dimension and my uh, sentiment of my leaves would stand out against the background. I glued them onto the card along with some Trinity stamps, something new pearls. I kept the focus on that blue textured background by keeping the design very simple and only using white and black with it, even though there's some shine to the black. Okay, let's do the card using the smaller blue piece. This time I thought I'd use the same embossing folder on the note card itself so it matched. So this is some Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock that I folded into a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding note card. And I'm putting that same vine canopy embossing folder just on the front. I'll run it through my die cut machine and I end up with a note card where the front has that beautiful embossing texture. Using an embossing folder on the front of a card is a great way to kind of add texture and interest to a simple card. Next I cut a white rectangle with faux piercing around the outside edge and that is from an older Lawn Fawn dotted rectangle die set. Now on here, I'm going to glue that little piece of blue that we have left over. By putting it on this white piece, it'll help it stand out against the background. I added that onto our embossed gray note card, and I once again used that black metallic cardstock for the leaf and for the sentiment. So this really keeps the eye on that blue faux metallic look. I also added some Trinity Stamps silver satin baubles just to kind of float around there. And by the way, that uh, thankful sentiment is from the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Thankful Die Set. This one's been around for a while, but I really like the style of it. And then you can stamp whatever thankful message you want on the inside. Now I was really liking the blue and black and white combo, so I thought I'd do another card with that. This time I have that purplish black metallic cardstock from Tim Holtz, where I use the vine canopy embossing folder and then the sanding block on it. I then added a white rectangle to the center and then a blue metallic etched leaf. I also used the Simon Says Stamp Hey Love die, and I cut the shadow from white cardstock and the love from black metallic cardstock and then I white heat embossed a sentiment on black metallic cardstock to go underneath. And I'll show you that stamp set later. So in this case, I made sure that I let a lot of the background show around the outside edge. Here's another example that's very similar. Sometimes when I'm creating, I like to come up with a design. And if I like it, I do a few of those, just changing up the colors a bit. This time I did change up the die I used in the center. This is the Eucalyptus Leafs die. There's actually another one that comes with it. I've used it many times in videos. So here I have a gold metallic background from the Tim Holtz pack, and I did the embossing folder in the sanding. We have the white rectangle in the center and a silver leaf die cut in the center of that. I then used the Hello from the black metallic cardstock, and the You're the Best is from a sentiment strip pack from Simon Says Stamp. I then finished it off with some gold baubles from Trinity Stamps. I think this one would be a great anniversary or wedding card. Okay, let's move on to another card design. Again, I took a background and cut it at an angle, so I ended up with two cards. This first one, I actually made an odd size, and I wanted to show you how I made the envelope to go with it. Now the butterfly on this one is from the Birch Press Butterfly Basics die set. This is a great set. You can create layered butterflies very easily and I'll be using it in an upcoming video too. Now on the background of my card, I used the Pink and Main Wide Stripes embossing folder. It's very subtle, but I thought it added interest to that plain white area at the top. Now you can see the butterfly I made with that basic butterflies die set. I just used white cardstock and silver cardstock. Now my note card I had cut down to be a little narrow. The note card is three and a half 
by five and a half inches tall, and my butterfly is hanging off the edge. However, that won't fit into a regular envelope, so I'm gonna make my own envelope. Actually, I'm going to alter a five by seven envelope. I'm cutting a half inch off each side of my envelope. Now I'm just going to reseal the side of the envelope with liquid adhesive or thin tape, and then I have an envelope that fits my card better. Now I could have just kept the envelope five by seven and put my card in it, which again, the card is about five by five and a half inches. However, this gives it a more snug fit, and I kind of like that it's a custom size. It works great for this card. So I wanted to share that trick with you. It's pretty easy to do. So if you have an odd size card, don't be afraid to alter your envelope to make it work. Let's take a closer look at that card. I used the Hello from the 3D card die set, and I did that from black metallic cardstock, and I also did a thin strip of black metallic cardstock for a border. So you can see how I did the embossing folder on the green part and did the sanding, which allowed a silver to show through, which matched nicely with the silver cardstock I used on the butterfly. Now here is the other half of that green embossed background. This time I did something special to the envelope in a different way. This is just a regular A2 envelope, and I'm using the embossing folder just on the flap of the envelope. This is a great way to make your envelope really match your card it'll have the same texture that the card does. This is something that you can do easily with most embossing folders. You can see it'll go through sideways in your die cut machine, most machines it will, and look at how the texture on the envelope now matches the background. Now this design is very similar to what I've been doing. You can see I have the leaf there in silver. I have a silver cardstock border, a black metallic hello die cut, and then I stamped a little sentiment underneath with black ink. Again, all of this is allowing our faux metallic background to show. By the way, the sentiment on this one and also the white heat embossed sentiment I did earlier is from the Simon Says Stamp You Are Love stamp set. This is a new one. I love this set. I think it's very encouraging and I really like the hands image on the bottom and that there's a coordinating die to cut it out. Okay, let's move on to that iridescent purple background where I did the embossing and the sanding on it. Now I wanted to remind you of a trick for cutting out thin sentiments. So these are sentiment strip packs from Simon Says Stamp. These are the new pride set. And if you want to cut out just one and make sure you cut it out just right, this is what I do. I use my Tim Holtz trimmer and I cut along one edge. Now I wanna make sure I cut along the other edge but space it right. Here's my trick. I've shared this before but wanted to share it again. I have a piece of white cardstock here and I'm lining it up right against the blade. So now I'll slide my cardstock with the sentiment underneath it and I'll line it up so the edge of that white cardstock is where I wanna cut. You can see how my sentiment is positioned perfectly. I'll cut there and check it out. My words are spaced evenly on there and I have a sentiment to add to my card. This works great with these sentiment strips that are pre-printed from Simon Says Stamp, which I really like. They're very inexpensive and there's so many included in a pack. But it also works if you stamp your own sentiment and you need to cut that out too. So now here is my card. Same thing as before. I did a white butterfly with some pink metallic cardstock this time using that same butterfly set from before. Here I'm putting two thin strips of white cardstock behind our sentiment. That's gonna allow it to stand up a bit, give it some dimension. I prefer this over foam tape because it'll hold up better in the mail. So now I'm putting liquid adhesive on the back of that and I can add it to our butterfly. Now I originally had a black border right above our embossed background, but I ended up changing it to silver. I thought that stood out a bit more and I made the body of the butterfly silver. So there you can see that beautiful background iridescent, did the embossing folder, and then sanded it to mute that pattern. Gives such cool result, and you don't need to spend much time on the rest of the card. Now here's another card where I use the same cardstock and the same embossing folder, but I didn't sand it. I cut it into two pieces so I could have two cards. And this time I glued it onto a note card, but check it out, that note card, I use the same embossing folder, and the pattern lines up between our metallic background and the white cardstock. I really like that, and I just love all the texture. I use the Laurel Etch Leaf once again with silver metallic cardstock, and then I used an older Simon Says Stamp Thanks die from CZ Designs, and I did the shadow from white cardstock and the thanks word itself from black metallic cardstock. 
And then underneath that, I put an older Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip. Now, most of my cards used that vine canopy embossing folder because those are the backgrounds I like the most. But here's one using the leaf bundle embossing folder. And I used a silver metallic cardstock that I found in my extras drawer. Now for the butterfly on this, I used the Birch Press Glimmer Butterfly Layering Die Set along with the basic butterfly die set I showed you earlier. I love layering dies like this, and I'm gonna show you a bunch of ideas on how to use these in an upcoming video. Same die set. Now this time, I used one of the layers of the butterfly and cut it from rainbow holographic cardstock. This is a beautiful cardstock, and you can pick what color areas you like. So this ends up giving me a butterfly that's kind of pink towards the top, and purple towards the bottom. And I thought that was neat against the silver background. So I encourage you, again, look through your specialty card stocks and use that for die cutting elements like the butterfly or with your embossing folders for your backgrounds. So I put that rainbow butterfly layer on the top and then the other two layers behind it, I did from white card stock, just so it would stand out. And the sentiment is from a Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip once again. I tell you, those are super handy. Now remember, I still have a lot of backgrounds I created earlier that I didn't get around to making cards for. That's one of the great things about this technique is it's fast to do and you can make really special cards. And I know metallic card stocks or specialty card stocks usually cost more, but from one eight and a half by 11 sheet, you can get four backgrounds and you can cut those backgrounds up to make multiple cards too. So I hope you'll give this a try. It really is fun and easy and a great way to get new looks with your embossing folders. If you're interested in the supplies I use, they are linked below in my YouTube description as always. But please go over to my blog where I have photos of all of these cards and you can bookmark them and save them for future reference. I also have a couple other related videos here in the middle and I am so thankful you spent this time with me today and I'll see you soon with another video using some of the same products.